Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive through message is when all hope was lost. These are the best of times. These are the worst of times. These are biblical times. And as the weeks roll along, these words I said have become pregnant with more meaning. As you see calamities happen around the world. Wars, rumor of wars. You see um, civil unrest popping out around the world. Volcanoes popping off. Um, the seas raging. Strange sightings and anomalies in the skies. These are biblical times. As God has set the stage for his end time harvest. And cheer up saints. It's going to get worse. I've been telling you that. Bracing you that for a long time. But remember in the darkness what you were taught. Which is God's word and the light. And this message here is definitely a whole field message. A message hoping that it will repair your faith. I've, I've been handling personal business for a while, so some of you wonder why I haven't posted any uh, new videos lately. I had a lot of I'm mustard right now. I mean, uh, but I was playing catch up. So that's why I disappeared. But all is well. And uh, back in the cell, and just in time, I even received a strike <laughs> on my YouTube channel for a video I can't even remember how long ago. This video, so some these uh, social media um, socialists, social media socialists have a lot of time on their hand <laughs> to sift through, you know, we're we're approaching 1,200 videos, so to, to, to surf through or sift through that amount of videos to find something that I said in regarding of the election is what I would call overreach, but these are the end times. And if you speak in the thus saith the word of the Lord, if you're on the side of right, if you're united behind God's anointing, which is a President Trump, he's catching heat, so why wouldn't you catch heat? Now, the Bible says, touch not my anointing. And those that are pursuing Trump, the uh, powers that be, this, these New World Order neophytes that's pursuing Trump, are holding up a can the worms they're not ready for. We're living in biblical times where God is going to teach this evil and sinful world and generation that he's still on his throne. And the world is his. Cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. He holds the very breath of all of us in his hands. Satan is powerless to stop anything God, the Father, in heaven wills to do. And he knows. All Satan is is a cosmic copycat, cosmic poop boy. He can only imitate. He can't create. No. Anything. In his zeal to be God, 
He became uplifted in pride and dragged one third of the host of heaven, that angelic host, down with him on vain promises. God delivers his promises. That's what we go get into today. Forever, O oh Lord, that word is set on him. Spend an eternity with Satan, believe in his lies. Ye are gods. That's what most of these New World Order neophytes believe. They sold out, sold their soul to the deceiver. And it's their first thousand years are roasted in eternity. They will say, you're just like, I believe it was Ezekiel 14. Or it could have been Isaiah the 28. Is this the champion? Tell them I'll say, as he stripped of all his power that God granted. Then they say he is helpless as us. These kings of the earth, these powers that be, that sold their soul to him, are going to be kicking their own selves in the tail throughout eternity for following this loose. Say, you know, there's a thousand roads to hell. Say, you don't care how you get there. You could make a monument to yourself, worship yourself. You could believe you are a God. That's what he said he was. He don't care how you get to hellfire. He care less. How would you get there? And he's deceiving many, the Bible said. The whole world, the Bible said. It's only a remnant, only a few. That will escape the broad way that lead her to destruction. Now Paul was on fire. He was being persecuted as we are being persecuted. In this day, we're standing up for the truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father but by me. John 14, 6. It's only one way into return. And that's through Christ. Acts 4, 10, I believe it is. There's no name under heaven that men might be saved. Say that of Christ Jesus. Only anything else is falsehood. And I've taught a lot on falsehood and false prophets. Look it up. Look up the teaching. But Paul was going up against falsehood in his day. The spirit of Antichrist, Paul said, was already at work in his day. We're in the last days, the last times. I'm much more prevalent, relevant. Is that message today? Because Satan knows he has but a little time. And he's trying to drag his, his whole creation, all mankind, as many as he can, down to the pit of hell, fire with him, to roast throughout eternity. He knows what heaven's like. He knows the, the bliss of heaven. He knows it's too late for him. Misery loves come. And Paul stood up for his day and was persecuted greatly for it. Now, we're going to get into this message when all hope was lost. Because a lot of you have lost hope. A lot of you have given up on God. A lot of you have given up on God's anointing that he said he was going to bring the power because it didn't go down the way that you wanted it to go down. 
And we're going to read about Paul, who wanted to go to Rome, but he didn't go down the way he wanted to go either. God is the boss. When you surrender to, to God, when you gave your life to God, He owns us. Lock, stock, and barrel. We're no longer a slave to the flesh, sin, world, the devil. But you become a doulos, the Greek slave to God. No man can serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24. Either he will love the one and hate the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and men. Can't serve God and Satan. So many New Age Christians today don't get that. The cross is an altar. That's all it is. It's a modern day altar where you die to self. Jesus said, take up your cross. Jesus took up his. We have a cross to take up. We give them a teaching on the cross. We've been told on it several times. Die to self, which is hard to do. And to do it daily, which is hard to do. Hard for me to put my pants on. One lady at a time is you. I know we got some super spiritual people that, I mean, I'm almost sure some of them could walk on water. But I'm not that guy. <laughs> I struggle. From day to day. Some days are better than others in my faith. But I'm fixated on dust said the word of the Lord. When the chips are down, I'm still saying, God said. And that's what counts. Whether we we or water. But just don't fall down. And if you fall down, get up, point in the right direction. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels and crack pots. I could say something, but it would sound kind of vulgar, right? <laughs> and offensive. And it has something to do give you a good hint with the BM movie. And some of these hypocrites that was behind the pulpits, a lot of them have fallen. God exposed their hypocrisy. Living a double life. Why they preached about against the very thing they were doing. That's where the word hypocrite comes from. They put on a mask. They put it down and put down others. And behind the scenes, you doing the same thing or worse. Jesus said. About having a giant tree in your eye and judging your brother. My sister for the splinter that's in here. It's the church age we live in. And social media has magnified this living a double life, a lie. And everybody's trying to get their 15 minutes of fame. And a lot of people have went home, have went to Hollywood. Oops, I almost mispronounced. A lot of people went to Hollywood. It's like those actors that get exposed all the time. They live double lives. Some of them stay in character. They done lost sight of who they are. They done played so many different characters. Some of them are permanently locked in and do a character, lost sight of them, their own. 
persona. And it's living a lie. It becomes something you're not. Actors. And that's what's prevalent now. Actors. Actors across all stages of life. But the worst are the actors in the church. Actors. Paul was real. That's why we're studying. You many many of you have followed Street Priest Ministry. It's a few, it's a few of you from the very get go. You were there. And you've seen the same Brother Jay. The same Brother Jay. Wearing the same uniform. <laughs> I know some of you said, when, when is he going to change? Well, when Superman and Batman changed their uniform. So get you focused on God's work. Too much of the church world to become a fashion show. Preachers in ten thousand dollar suits, <laughs> strutting like peacocks across the stage. Those days are coming to an end, as God is raising up His Elijahs, His Moses. He's raising up real men and women of God that aren't interested in a fashion show. They are interested in serving God in spirit and truth, in teaching God's word in spirit and truth. Thus saith the word of the Lord. That's what Street Priest Ministry has been about from the get-go. God's word is the compass for this ministry. And you that have followed it over the years, those that are still around have grown and matured in the faith because that's what this ministry is about. Maturity in the faith. That's what Paul talks about. Get my teaching. Um, too many babes in the church, babe tarts. He's a giant. To me, Still clinging to the breast. Still hanging off the tea. Drinking milk. Been in the church 30, 40 years, having grown an inch. That's what that God is looking for. He's looking for us to move on in faith, grow up mature. And get on this battlefield for Christ. We're warriors. And our warfare is not carnal, but spiritual. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, in high places. This is what's going on now. And we need to put the whole armor of God on and stand and withstand against the wiles of the devil, the methodos of the devil. He hasn't really changed since the Garden of Eden. His temptation is still the same. Appeal to your fleshly appetites. Appeal to your, your pride, your vanity. Appeal to your worldly lust for power and riches in this world. God. Hadn't changed. We were created to worship God and serve God. We we're made in God's image. That's what God wants. That's what He's looking for. 
And Paul embodied that. Paul embodied that. He embodied servitude. Christ didn't come to be served. He came to serve. He made that clear. To do his father's will. And that should be our main objective. To do our father's will. To humble ourselves like Christ humbled himself even to the death of the cross. That's what a cross is, is an altar. Altar means you surrender. Put that, whatever it is, that object, that thing on the, on the altar and turn it over to the deity for it to do with no rights, no claims, nothing held back to do what it wishes with what you turned over it to on that altar. But you dedicated it to, to that altar. Now, so we're to offer up our bodies a living sacrifice. We're on the cross, it's all of us. The cross is only good to die. Die to your will, your way, yourself. Come alive to what God wants you to be and do whatever He has planned for you in the body of Christ. Now, it was a long intro because I haven't been lying for a while. So I thought I would prepare you for this message. And Paul was an old type in the faith, a fighter, a scrap. before God turned him around on the road to Damascus and blinded him. He was led by his hand three days. His whole life revealed to him. He went to Mount Sinai and was trained by the resurrected Christ three and a half years. So he had a total knowledge of the law, revelation, and what the law really meant, what God really intended. And Christ was the fulfillment of the law. Christ was the only perfect man that ever lived in history. All the rest of us are flawed. And if it wasn't for Christ becoming our kinsman redeemer, which is part of the, it's written in the law about the kinsman redeemer, and having the price to pay, which was perfection. None of us are perfect. The law demanded perfection. That's why the devil's greatest trick is to get those to get under the curse of the law, to get out of faith and grace. Because and to renounce what Christ did and try to work their way to heaven in the flesh. And all they're gonna get is a surprise on the other side, hellfire. Because the law demanded perfection from birth to death. You had to dot your T's, caught your eyes, and like anything in life, ignorance was no excuse at all. There were 613 precepts inside the kosher laws and other laws that you had to keep 24-7 from birth to death. Now we're both born under sin, under the curse of the sin. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's no way you could kept all those precepts from birth to, to death. So therefore, you deserve death. And that's what the law could only give to, a, to its fallen creation. It could show you what God's standard was and how far you were away from it. Just like a man could be who's seven foot seven. And another man could be five foot one. And you stand them next to each other. The other man, obviously, you can see the height differential. But that doesn't matter. If you're viewing that height differential from the sun 93 million miles away, that's God's glory. 
compared to our fallen state, sin and sales. We're not even close. And so-and-so being a little bit more better than so-and-so doesn't matter when you compare God's glory to us all. It's like the sun being compared to the seven foot seven man and the five foot one man doesn't matter. And we all fall short. All of sin and falling short of the glory of God. And the penalty for that was death. And this is what Paul unpacked God's word throughout Romans Revelation or Romans um, Galatians touched on it in Hebrews this is what was being taught Paul God or Christ trained to show and teach the Jews who rejected Christ and put him on the cross. But Paul was called to be a missionary to the Gentile church, which means other than Jews, all of them. And that's what he did to go forth to the rest of the world with the good news of the gospel. Because the pagans and heathens really didn't know much about the God's law. The Jews did, the Torah. So, let's go. I got a little thumping that you hear in the background. Is a, my turtle Tim, the turtle <laughs> he's, he's out of his, his pond. He's wrong with right now. And hopefully Tim will not bother the camera. <laughs> hopefully he'll steer clear of the camera. And I have a few pets. Alright, here we go. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King of Griffin, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions, which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth which was at first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, faith trained at the feet of a man. Paul was a philosopher. Yeah, we would have equivalent to a PhD today. Very well schooled, very well learned. Very learned man. He was well read. Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, he was very well read. He was a philosopher himself in his own right. And he knew the art of persuasion. He's doing the right which knew me from the beginning. He's given his, his background. If they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, 
Holly of the Pharisee. Pharisee means separate. They were separated and purest in keeping the law. And at least initially in the beginning, when Judas Maccabeus rebellion came forth, the Pharisees, which means separate. Defenders of the faith. Paul was a zealot for the law before. Christ knocked him off a horse and he was converted. He was a zealot. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was in charge of persecuting the Christians. He held the coat while they stole Stephen, the first martyr. In Acts. Early on, he was getting it, sworn edicts to go after the Christians and bring death to them all. They were seen to him as heretics. He was genuinely a defender of the Torah, the law, the Old Testament. And now I stand. And am judge for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you? that God should raise the dead. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest.